Thank you. Thanks. Welcome. So my name is Gavin Hewitt. I'm the VP of Sales at Big Door. Uh, I know many of you were expecting Keith Smith, our CEO, uh, but he was actually called away to a, an urgent family need. So uh, I'm actually going to be standing in for him today. So wish me luck. Uh, today we're going to dive into why rewards are such an important part of any loyalty and engagement effort. Let me start real quickly by telling you just a little bit about Big Door. At Big Door, we power consumer-facing rewards programs for large brands. Uh, these rewards give uh, users compelling reasons to register, engage more deeply, and remain more loyal to your brand. We work with some amazing partners, as you can see. So rewards versus badges. Many people think that gamification is just about badges and leaderboards. But we've found that rewards are a critical part of driving long-term customer engagement. So today we're going to talk about three things. The first, why do rewards matter? The second, we'll take some time to look at some brands who are currently using rewards to drive customer engagement. And finally, I'm going to share seven best practices of gamified rewards programs that are currently out there. So this is a great question. Why, why do rewards matter? It's so great. In fact, I think everybody on our staff has uh, rewards matter on their t-shirts this week. The bottom line is that consumers want rewards. And as a result of providing re relevant and authentic rewards, you're going to drive more impact on user behavior, and it's going to do a better job of deepening that customer engagement. A redeemable currency provides brands with granular enticement mechanism. A great example, I don't know how many of you stayed at a Starwood hotel this week? Or how many of you guys checked in at the W or some others? Anyway, I did, and uh, I was surprised when I showed up and they said, we'll give you 500 points if you decline cleaning services. Uh, and I don't know what that says about my cleanliness, but I jumped at the opportunity. And the, the, the great part was that it made me feel green on one hand, and it provided the hotel a no-cash way to reduce costs on cleaning services. Uh, so a fantastic way for them to be able to leverage rewards points to help entice me. A core part of any gamified rewards program is redeemable currency. Points, coins, whatever it may be that are used to redeem for rewards. The earning of this currency creates a sense of equity with the user, uh, and it keeps them coming back to earn more and to spend that currency. Nobody wants to give up the currency that they've accrued. They want to be able to spend that. And again, with the hotel example, I think there's a, a, a great shift that might actually be happening for me personally, because I'm a Marriott guy, but they don't give me 500, bucks for being, 500 points for being dirty. They, uh, they give me nothing, basically. So I just get my regular points for, for uh, booking my rooms and staying with Marriott. So giving back to your customers is core to the thank you economy. Switching costs are extremely low for folks these days, so creating lock-in by recognizing and thanking your customers will help differentiate you from your competitors. So Forrester, earlier this year, conducted a consumer survey where they asked adults who spend time online, how interested are you in joining the following types of loyalty programs if they were offered by a company you enjoyed doing business with? The results from the survey made it very clear that rewards matter. Two thirds of respondents would join if they got discounts or savings. While the, well, uh, over half would if they received loyalty points that could be redeemed for products and services. One third responded favorably to points that can be spent in an online shopping mall. And I'm not quite certain what this says about the American consumer, but only 17% of folks uh, would join if their points could benefit a charity. But the, really the, the core summary and the takeaway here is the fact that consumers want rewards like discounts and redeemable points. Another great question that they asked in the same survey was, which of the following might motivate you to share personal information with companies you are interacting with? And of course, cash rewards ranked at the highest by far. Um, but loyalty points, exclusive access, VIP perks, sweepstakes, and faster customer service all ranked extremely high. We at Big Door, we consider all of these items to be classified as rewards. And they're obviously very clearly important to the consumer. And our own data at Big Door supports this notion. Uh, we take a highly scientific approach to measuring the efficacy of our implementations and regularly do A-B 
cohort testing. Uh, in a wide-ranging test across tens of millions of users and multiple client implementations, we tested the effectiveness of badges only versus badges and rewards. And these, the results were astonishing. Uh, the, the cohort users who were only exposed to badges averaged less than a 1% registration rate, had less than two re uh, rewardable actions per day, and returned to the brand site less than two times per month. However, users who were presented with badges and rewards in conjunction with one another were over four times more likely to register with the site, performed an average of 3.5 rewardable actions, and returned to the site an average of almost four times per month. This test uh, absolutely proved for us that offering gamified rewards rather than just gamification has a significantly stronger impact on user behavior over the entire life cycle of that user or consumer. So how are big brands using rewards? We've seen the why. Now let's walk through some examples of how premium brands are currently using rewards in real world gamified reward implementations. The first here is the NFL. Uh, NFL uses clear value-based onboarding that shows the visitor exactly the kind of rewards that they're gonna receive as, as being, parts, being members of this program. And really the, the great thing about this was the lift that we saw in registration rate as a result of this value-based onboarding. Uh, prior to us working with them, they had a th below a 3% registration rate. Uh, currently their registration rate sits at 24%. Literally an 800% lift in registration on NFL.com. Here's another great example from Yamaha of using rewards as a way to entice registration. And hopefully some of you guys were able to attend Jeff from Yamaha's session yesterday. Um, he's had a ton of success with this program and I think this does a great job of showing clean and clear ways that you can surface rewards and, and make, this, make registration and make joining more enticing to the user. Uh, it's also important to note that through this registration process, we wanna be using a single sign-on approach. So we're not having two separate programs. We want to be pushing people through existing user authentication flows, making it really easy for the consumer to register with the brand. This value-based onboarding is easily extended to mobile, as is the customer interaction with the rewards center. So being able to access the rewards and see what's available to them if they were to join the program. Many of you who were here last year may have seen Chameleonaire speak, uh, another great client of ours. He was fantastic last year. Uh, he consistently uses what we call experiential rewards with amazing effectiveness. Uh, as in this particular case where people literally clamor at the opportunity to enter a sweepstakes to have a 30 minute call with him. Um, this is a great example of a low cost, high perceived value reward. Uh, and something that we encourage all of our partners to use is this, this, this experiential type of reward. Major League Baseball here, di they use discounts and uh, access as a great way to increase that customer engagement and reward that customer. In the case of MLB, they used uh, discounts to the store as well as paid content on MLB.com. Uh, and as you can see in this case, uh, the 25% discount was obviously highly effective. They were completely sold out on this day that I took the screenshot, um, but there are various other discounts and rewards available for folks. And we actually uh, do inventory and flight controls for everything that, that we power. Uh, and so as these things get lower in quantity, we use the game mechanic of scarcity to let people know that this is running out and they need to do more actions in order to achieve this particular reward. Fame is a reward. This is an interesting one. Uh, think of this as the customer of the month or wall of fame type of approach. Uh, in this case, it happens to be on a site called MaddenTips.com for people who love playing Madden football. Uh, and they're giving rewards members a chance to achieve a level of fame by being featured on their live stream show. Uh, so again, as you're thinking about being able to provide access and engagement with your customers, uh, this is a, a great way to do that. We also leverage a lot of uh, Twitter shout outs or follows on Twitter. Uh, we found that to be highly effective as well in identifying the types of consumers you want to be engaging with, especially if they're actually redeeming for those types of engagements with your brand. Even generic rewards work really well, uh, especially for B2B customers. Uh, in this case, they have a mixture here of, you know, for a point total, getting a gift card or entering for a sweepstakes. 
Um, we do a lot of this for companies like Microsoft, and we partner with companies like Tango Card, who do a really great job of supporting us in that. Sweepstakes is another great way to offer, offer low cost, high perceived value rewards. Uh, this screenshot shows what it would look like within a reward center potentially. And again, we take a custom approach to any implementation. So by no means are we beholden to this type of reward center, but this one has proved to be very effective. And I really love this one because they actually offer a zero coin total redemption. Uh, and we found through our testing that if we can get somebody to redeem one thing with a brand, they're, they're exponentially more likely to engage with that brand further moving forward uh, because they see that they're getting that value exchange with the brand. So showing progression is also critical. And we're quite proud to be powering the gamification.co rewards program. And I think their implementation does a great job of showing members progression towards a desired goal. And also letting folks know when they've earned enough to redeem that reward. So now you've earned enough, go redeem. And get them to spend that currency and get them to engage with your brand. Also, this is a really great use of the progress bar, which is kind of old school, but it works super well in getting people kind of nudging them to that next step and making sure that they take the actions that we want them to. So let's wrap up with seven simple best practices that Big Door has uncovered through our own testing across hundreds of clients and tens of millions of users. First, it is important to decide up front if, whether or not you want to have a dollar-backed or a non-dollar-backed base currency. A dollar-backed currency is like an airline mile or a Starbucks star. They're typically redeemed for products and services. And because of this, uh, it really only makes sense for dollar-backed currencies when you're rewarding purchases or behavior that directly drives revenue for your company. Big Door, while we can power those, typically uses non-dollar-backed currency, which means that the financial liability of the reward itself is set at the point of redemption, not at the point of earning. Rewards, oh, sorry, I actually didn't click that there. Leverage rewards for onboarding. Uh, so rewards that have costs associated with them must have inventory and flight time limitations, uh, such as sweepstakes and experiential rewards allow this to be a, a non-dollar-backed base currency. Leveraging rewards for onboarding. As we've seen from Big Door's own research and Forrester's, rewards provide a great incentive for users to register. So be sure to highlight rewards as an enticement mechanism to sign up and register with your company. It's hard to monetize or establish that relationship with a user if you don't even know their name. So leverage rewards significantly, leveraging rewards significantly increases your registration rates. Always have a sync. Always provide a way for your users to spend their points. If you're using a non-dollar back based currency, then make sure there are non-variable cost rewards available uh, that can provide that bottomless sync for folks within to burn their redemption points. We call it a, a burner reward so people can burn their currency or a sync where they can go and dump their currency in. Sweepstakes is an excellent way to do a non-variable cost bottomless sync reward, highly effective, and hopefully you can provide some kind of experience that people will really push towards. Uh, Come in there again, half an hour conversation, uh, you know, a, a Starbucks, a Starbucks of the world. It might be a trip to, to Coffee Con or something like that. Experiential rewards are another great example. Uh, when done right, these experiences serve to deepen the user engagement, and uh, and with your brand. What better way to find out who you should be following on Twitter, as I mentioned before, than offering a Twitter, Twitter follow as a reward. Redeem early, redeem often. And I mentioned this with the, the Yamaha example. Our data shows that users who redeem any reward at all are far more valuable, engaged, and loyal. So have some low-priced rewards that can and will be rewarded early on in the customer's experience. And finally here, we all like to know where we stand. So use game mechanics to highlight progression towards a goal. The all-important all progress bar, as we saw with gamification.co, is simple, but when applied properly and presented at opportune times, it can have a huge impact on users continuing to stay engaged. As I mentioned, the, the terminology we often use is using it as a nudge, nudging people along in the process and engagement with the brand. And those are the seven best practices. Thank you.